Hello everyone, welcome to the uh, Canano, the first video on the Canano um, tutorial. Uh, Canano is the software that we're going to use to create our DNA origami structures. And you could get this software by going to the cadnano.org website and then hitting on the download link here. Uh, you have two choices here, Mac OS and Windows. It also works for Linux, but we're not working on a Linux machine. Today we're working on a Windows machine, so what we're going to do is uh, click on the Windows. You have two options here. You have the old instructions, which is the version that I'm using. Uh, so far still works well. You just follow these instructions here, uh, which are similar to the instructions. The new ones were the most recent ones, most current. Uh, and it has two installation guides here, the Mac OS and Windows. Uh, I've looked through these installation guides and they're pretty simple to follow, so I will not be doing a tutorial on them. Uh, but if necessary, I'll make one if I request it. So let's um, continue with the software. So now that we've installed our software, uh, let's get to know uh, all the basic menus. So this is ba ba all the options that you have and all the tools. So this is what's going to be a, just a quick rundown of all the uh, what all these things mean here so let's start from the top over here we have file with you know, some of the classic um, options you know uh, you have about information gives you information about the software like that uh, you have uh, I'll talk about preferences in a bit uh, you have new open uh, close save and save as which is uh, just simple file management uh, very classic stuff we all seen uh, in preferences, we see here uh, uh, the default options or dimensions for your honeycomb. Depending on your structure, we're gonna have to you will want to increase all of this. Uh, but for today's tutorial, you will not need to. You can experiment with these later. Uh, but like the default tool at startup, it just asks you which tool do you want to start up as. Uh, always the select tool is fine, and the the zoom speed. Uh, so how much you, how fast you zoom in. Uh, but you have the new plugins, which are just extra software that you can have here. Uh, most of these options I don't mess around with. Uh, unless I'm creating a huge structure, then I'll, I'll start uh, playing around with these. Uh, but to, for today's uh, purposes, we will need to do that. Uh, you can experiment with that stuff later. So looking at the top ribbon here, we have a uh, new open also save. And then uh, now we're getting more specialized uh, tools we have SVG and I believe this uh, saves a file in the SVG format you can use with Adobe Illustrator I do not use this so I really have no use for this um, you have your export this will export your file that you make here uh, into a CSV file I believe and you could use uh, that Excel to edit that file and add our delete basis and we'll get to that more later on uh, then you have your honeycomb which gives you your default uh, what your base uh, structure is going to look like, what the base is a honeycomb. gives you a honeycomb shaped structure. If you zoom in here, we add these helices here by double clicking. You can see it makes a, a that you're in a base of the way they arrange uh, the DNA strands are in a, in a honeycomb pattern. Uh, so you have to keep in mind that in this view you're looking down the dna molecule you know it's like it's like taking a dna stretching it out and then looking through it like you were looking down a you know looking down a like uh like a pipe or something or a tube that's what you're looking at and and it's here this is one dna double helix here not this is not a dna this is a bunch of dna double helix it's just one of these so we'll delete all of them oh only one of these, this is a DNA double helix. So there's two strands here going down. And then over here on this screen over here, this is a path. And there's basically you take a DNA and um, what you're doing is you have it on its side. And these are the bases here. You're looking at the DNA by its side, but we'll get to the screen a little bit later. Okay, so, and then we hit new to delete it and then hit square. And the same idea here, but except they're more tightly packed and they're in a square formation. This is what we're going to use for our first tutorial on creating a, in a 2D structure here. Okay. So that's what we're going to use. Then we have auto staple. And this will 
help us add staple strands. So for example, let's say, and we're not going to create a shape here. So I'm just going to run real quick through this. We have a structure here and we want to add the staple strands, the other strands, so the complementary strands that are going to pull the shape together. We hit auto staple and they'll create auto staples, which will always be in different colors besides blue. Auto break is a tool that's used so you could break up these staple strands because they cannot be too long or too short. And we're going to go over that more in detail later in another tutorial. Um, next, after this, we have these uh, basically selection filters here. I'm going to collapse this down because we don't need it here as much. Uh, so this, what this allows us to do is that it allows us to select different things. So for example, if you want to only select the scaffold uh, and edit that, what we could do is unclick that staple here. And now the staples cannot be selected. So whatever I do, I cannot highlight the colored ones. But the blue one, are I could still manipulate that. This I could still work with. But now let's say I, I do want to only mess with the staples, but not the scaffold. So I just hit staple undo scaffold and now scaffold I can't I can't touch that but I could definitely touch the staple strand so what that's what this filter does uh, same thing here for this is it lets you allow uh, the helices it lets you be able to move them and this could be a little finicky you have to click on the center and then you can move these around like that uh, I don't really use this tool but maybe for your design you might need it so over here we can also select the the ends this one helps us select the endpoints only uh well right now i have i can only select the endpoints of the staple because i have st staple and the ends but if i put scaffold i can only select these and when i do a highlight it only highlights the ends if i would do a this one over here the standard with strands and take away this one i could highlight the strands but not but it automatically highlights the ends, uh, but for some reason we have two options. But this is to highlight the strands only. And then over here, these points here where things cross over, they're of course called crossover points. And you can't really select them, at least not automatically. And you have to create, have the select the crossover point tools, and then we could select them, we could delete them. So we could delete crossovers here. And we'll talk a little bit more about crossovers later. Okay, so now that we have this, we have this tool called a slider and the slider just tells you uh, what base you're in. So it helps you pinpoint things. So right now we're in six and 12 and if you on the 12th base, but we're in the, on the zero uh, helis, so zero uh, 11. So that'd be like your coordinate. So if you really want to get specific with stuff, you could document these. Well, there's a crossover point here at from that goes from the zero to one at the 23 and zero position. So that's what this is that. And over here on the on the left side, you have this moves your bar to the first position or to the last position all the way at the end. As you can see here, now it's all the way over here at the end. And now that we're in this section, let's talk about these little arrows here. These little arrows let you delete crossover points uh, or collapse it, but it doesn't really work when you want to minimize it. But if you want to stretch more bases, if you want to add more bases to the side, just click here and then you can add the many bases as you want by clicking OK. So I click OK and then more bases are, but then you have to stretch these out more farther out. Uh, the renum tool over here on the left side, I do not really use it. Um, so we will not concentrate on that. Maybe for your design, you might need it. Over here on the path panel tools, we see we have one of the last bit of tools over here. We have the select, which is this just lets you select things. So, you know, anything that you have highlighted over here or filtered in or filtered out, you let you select. The pencil tool allows us to make crossover points, custom crossover points. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, that when you do these custom, cross, custom crossover points, uh, they can only be made uh, from one end to another end. So what we do here is that you have to click on this tool over here. Excuse me. Um, making I have to unselect the crossovers.
but it lets you draw crossover points that you cannot that you cannot usually make uh, on their own. It, it's a pretty useful tool when uh, when it decides to work. I don't know why it's not working for me right now. But let's see if I can make this work. If not, we're going to have to come back to it in a different tutorial. For the initial tutorials, you will not need this tool. Uh, but eventually, we probably would. Uh, let's move on to the next one. So the break tool lets you break off any DNA. It could, let, it could split it here. And then maybe we could make a, let's see, we could make a crossover joint here. I guess not. Well, it lets you break anything. You could break DNA, uh, uh, staple strands too. Any place you, you uh, click on them. The insert tool lets you add bases. So between, let's see, between these two lines here, uh, between these two sections here, there's around 10 bases. If you want to insert bases here, you could always click on them and you add bases to each side. If you want to remove bases, you just use the skip tool and nothing will bond to these. Nothing will be programmed to bond to these. Uh, paint allows you to change the color of strands depending on the colors you select over here on the uh, top left. And the sequence lets you add a sequence to your DNA once it's all completed. And once it's all complete, you can add the sequence and then you can export that sequence. And we'll go over that in the next tutorial. So this concludes this tutorial where we go over the tools. Uh, next, we're going to create a small square that we could use uh, to learn how to use these tools properly. Thank you.